previous lecture, we looked at all of the different values uh, that you can see when you give an ls-l of a directory or for a given file. In this lecture, we want to talk a little bit about permissions, those specific values uh, to the left when you do an ls-l output. And we're going to talk a little bit about how permissions are represented, how we can communicate permissions to other users, and how we can go ahead and change permissions. We'll talk a little bit about uh, ownership of a file and group ownership of a file. And we'll look at the commands for changing ownership and group ownership of a file. Uh, but we won't actually execute those uh, commands. We'll just take a peek at what those commands are. So let's talk a little bit about file permissions. The way that I teach file permissions is to talk a little bit about the numeric way of representing file permissions. There's actually a way to do this uh, using characters, but I prefer the numeric way, so that's what I teach. There are three specific permissions that every file can have uh, for every, uh, and those, those are related to the various groups uh, that can, um, or individuals that can modify that file. So again, remember we have the owner of the file has one set of permissions, the group that is uh, that file belongs to has another set of permissions, and finally, all other users on the system have their own set of permissions for that file. And each uh, group of permissions has the ability to uh, affect read, write, and execute permissions. So the owner can have a specific level of read, write, and execute permissions. All other users on the system have a specific set of read, write, and execute permissions. And um, any uh, member of the files group have their own set of read, write, and execute permissions. And each one of these values can be represented in octal, and in this case, uh, a number uh, that can be represented between 0 and 7. So in this case, you'll notice that read permissions are the number four, write permissions are the number two, and execute permissions are the number one. When we combine these together, if a file were to have read and execute permissions, we would say that its permission is five. If a file were to have read, write, and execute permissions, we would just add those numbers up and say that its permission was seven. So in the example that you're taking a look at right now, uh, the permissions for any given file is 755. And the way we can think about this is, um, well, let's take a look at how we can think about this in a little more detail. The number seven means that, in this case, the owner can read, write, and execute a file. Therefore, since read has the value four, write has the value two, and execute has the value one, we add all of those up, and we get seven. What can the group do to this file? Well, it can read and execute it. In this case, it's a directory. So uh, you take four, which is the value for read, you take one, which is the value for execute, and you get five. What can everybody else in the system do? Well, they can read and execute as well. So that permission is five. So this idea of a permission being 755 is a way of quickly saying that the owner can read, write, and execute, a group can read and execute, and all their users on the system can read and execute, uh, in this case, a directory. So this idea that, notice that, you know, there are four plus two is six, so that would be the way of saying that a file can be read and written, but not executed. <clears throat> Uh, notice also that if a file has a permission of zero, it means that that uh, owner, group, or all other users in the system have no permissions towards those files. Let's talk a little bit about the commands that help make this possible. If you want to change permissions for a file, use the chmod command. Uh, notice that I'm using a slightly different prompt here, and that indicates root privileges, but you can actually change modification on any files that you own, uh, or have the ability to do that too. Uh, change ownership, chown, and chgrp are the commands that you can use to change the ownership of a file and change group ownership of a file. Usually you will need elevated privileges or to be root to do that. So I just wanted to show you those commands. When we move over to the command line examples, what we'll do is we will take a look at mostly just utilizing the chmod command. Um, I will mention that each file on your system has what's called a umask. Uh, and the umask is the default set of file permissions for when you create a new file. So on many systems, you notice that if you create a plain text file, say using the touch command, uh, all those files might come up as permissions 644, six being that uh, the owner can uh, read and write the file, four being that all of the groups uh, and other users on the system can only read the file. Most directories come up as being default permissions 755. So there is a way that you can modify this. Uh, there is actually a command called umask, so I just wanted to make you aware of that as well. Uh, there are three other special um, file permissions that we will not discuss in this lecture. We'll discuss them a little bit later on, but I want to make you aware if you ever run into the SUID, SGID, and sticky bit permissions that I'm actually leaving these permissions 
out of this discussion. Let's go to the command line. Let's take a look at how to use the chmod command and actually change the permissions of some files. If I do an ls-l in my home directory, what you're going to notice is, is that I have a number of directories and files in this directory. And if you take a look at the file called test, you'll notice that I actually just created this file. I used touch, so it's empty. And this file has the permissions of read-write for the owner, read-write for members of the group, and read for all of the users on the system. Um, you'll notice that Ubuntu by default uses this thing called private user groups where every user is put into uh, a group of with the same name as their um, username. This isn't necessarily the way all systems are set up uh, and it is possible to be added to multiple groups. Uh, again, something we'll talk about a little later in the semester, but for right now we just want to kind of understand who owns this file, what group owns this file, and how that relates to the permissions of the file. So if we were to look at this file, we would say that read-write is 6, read-write is 6, and read is 4. So we could say that this test file has a default set of permissions of 664. So if I want to change it, first of all, let's use chmod, which is the command to change uh, a file's uh, permissions. And what I'd like to do is change it so nobody has access to this file. So if I set the mod of a file to 000, the way I do it is I use the chmod command, I give my new permissions, and I give the name of the file. Now, I'm just going to look at that file so we don't have to look through everything. You'll notice that the per new permissions on the test file are all dashes. This means that I can't read, write, or execute it. Nobody in my group can read, write, or execute it. And nobody else in the system can read, write, and execute it. That seems a little bit extreme. Now let's say I want to give myself the ability to read and write the file, but nobody else. Well, I would give myself read and write. That's 4 plus 2 is 6, but nobody else will get 0 and 0. And if I run that and take a peek, now you'll notice that I have read write privileges. No one in my group has read write and execute privileges, and no one else in the system has read write execute privileges. If I want to give people in my group the same privileges, I could do uh, 660, and it would carry over to the next set of users, uh, the next classification of user. In this case, it would be the group. So notice that uh, setting permissions is as easy as saying, okay, I want users to read and write. Well, read is four, write is two, that's six. All right, now what do I want people in the group to do? Read and write, that's four plus two, that's six. Everybody else in the system, well, that doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't want to give them permission, so that's zero. Let's take a look at how permissions work with directories. Notice that the system created directories are something like the desktop, has the permissions RWX, R-X, R-X. RWX is seven because read is four, write is two, X is one, so that's seven. All group uh, members have read and execute permissions, so that's uh, four plus one is five, and then four plus one is five for all the users, so that's 755. So if I wanted to change, um, or if I make a new directory, now let's make a new directory. Let's see what permissions I get for that. Oops, I called it test dire, but we'll keep going. Um, and if we take a look at the test dire, what you're going to notice is that that was actually created as 775. So notice system directories by default are 755, uh, but directories that the system creates are 7, or that I create, uh, are 775. So notice that the, uh, the number 2 here, the right, is... Um, unavailable. And remember, I don't really want to get into talking about UMask, but these default permissions are actually set by a value on your system called UMask. And um, we'll talk about that again a little bit later on as well. Uh, setting the UMask is actually pretty valuable. It's a way to uh, change what the default permission values are uh, on your system. Um, so take a look at the man page. Today we just want to concern ourselves with setting actual permissions.